In this second video about IELTS Academic Writing Task 1, we'll look at what you need to do to achieve this task. We'll identify clear goals if you want to achieve a high score, and we'll also look at the reasons why so many people don't manage to achieve this. To help you understand how your writing is assessed, I'll also be asking you to put on your examiner hat. And at the end of the video, you can test yourself and try to apply the ideas we've discussed. Before we start, download the worksheet in the link below so that you're learning as you watch. And look for the exercise numbers in the top left hand corner. In the first video, we looked at several key problems in writing task 1. And we saw that your task 1 score can have a big impact on your overall writing score. We also looked at the key features of useful test practice materials. To get more information, we need to look at the band descriptors. The band descriptors tell us what your examiner is looking for when they assess your answer. We'll use the updated version, which is more detailed than the previous version. It's important to use the most up-to-date information about the test. This is particularly true in writing. I updated my vocabulary and grammar books in 2020 to help with this. So, let's put on our examiner hat and take a look at what the examiner is looking for in your writing. As we saw in the last video, task achievement seems to cause the most problems. So we'll focus on that for the moment. The name of this criterion is significant. You're being assessed on your achievement of the task. As we've seen, this task asks you to produce a summary of the information you're given. This means your examiner will check to see if you've managed to summarise the information, select and report the main features, and make comparisons where relevant. So these are the basic elements of the task that you need to achieve in your answer. Your examiner is trained to look for particular features in your answer that will help them to decide on your score. We can see that some key terms are used repeatedly, in particular key features and overview. And there are some key differences between the band scores. For example, a band 8 answer is one that has clearly presented, highlighted and illustrated the key features. A band 7 answer has clearly highlighted them, while a band 6 answer only covers the key features adequately. And a band 5 answer doesn't manage to do this. At band 5 or below, there is no overview. And at band 6, there is only an attempt to produce one. It's only at band 7 that the overview is clear. By band 8, the overview helps create a skillful, clear, appropriate answer. We can use the information in the band descriptors to add more details to our list of what your examiner is looking for in your answer. So, as well as these basic elements, we can see that the examiner is also checking whether you can give a clear overview and highlight and illustrate the key features. Looking further at the lower bands, we can see that your answer needs to be accurate. And the coherence and cohesion descriptors make it clear that you need to organise the information logically. We can see this list as a clear set of goals for anyone who wants to achieve a high score in IELTS Writing Task 1. This seems quite straightforward, so let's consider why so many people are not able to achieve this. The task is the prompt for your writing, which your examiner then checks, based on the band descriptors, to decide your score. In an ideal world, the test taker will think about the task, then produce writing that shows these skills, and receive a good score. However, the test preparation the candidate has been doing, and their beliefs about what high-level writing looks like, often interfere with this. These factors affect what they write and how they write, which has a significant impact on their score. Test preparation materials play an important role, but they're not the only problem here. Let's imagine this candidate is aiming for band 8 or higher in the writing test. As we saw, these are the goals they should have been working on to get ready for the test. But, just as we saw with writing task 2, 
these abstract ideas are difficult to apply in practice. It's even more difficult if you're using materials that don't allow you to develop all of these skills. Based on the many answers I've seen, there is a further key problem. Many high-level candidates don't appear to understand what these terms mean. As a result, they're unable to show these skills in their answer. I also find that people often don't make comparisons, perhaps because they want to present so-called high-level grammatical structures. And there is often no sense of clear organisation. Again, this idea seems to be poorly understood. I'm also surprised at how often the information isn't accurate. Careless mistakes or misinterpreting the data can lower your task achievement score to band 5 or even band 3. Hopefully you can see just how important these elements are. If they're missing from your answer, this could explain a disappointing overall writing score. This also shows that, as we saw in reading, if the practice materials you're using don't allow you to show and develop higher level skills, this will significantly limit the score you can achieve in the test. Again, this is why using reliable test materials is so important. Test yourself to see if you can apply all of these ideas and achieve this task. Be sure to spend only 20 minutes on the task, to summarise the information by selecting and reporting the main features, make comparisons where relevant, give a clear overview, highlight and illustrate the key features, and make sure that your information is accurate and logically organised. In the next video, I'll help you assess your answer to see if you're making common band 5 or band 6 errors, or whether you already know how to achieve a high score in task 1. In the meantime, my Writing Task 1 book shows you step by step how to develop these skills and achieve these goals in the test. The feedback I get from people using the books has been really great, as have their test scores. You can find all the links below, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss out on any new videos.